This question is quite similar in terms of its structure to the other nine marker that we looked at, which considered the importance of responses to a tropical storm. Um, here we're looking at a question more concerned with the uh, impacts of a natural hazard. Now, we could like, choose to carry on talking about Hurricane Sandy, but for the purpose of this video, and so as not to repeat ourselves, I'm going to look, uh, using our examples here, I'm going to look uh, more closely at the Nepal earthquake. Now, there's nothing really stopping me using tropical storm uh, like Hurricane Sandy or using our high income country uh, earthquake, uh, which is New Zealand Christchurch. However, the Nepal one probably gives me some more usable data and uh, examples to back up my argument. So, command word, really important here, assess. Okay. But, you know, again, it's one of those high-level command words. But the nice thing about this is really we can use the same structure that we use on a regular basis with discuss or to what extent arguments. That B, B, C argument. Both sides, blended, and conclusion. And like with the question about whether or not short-term or long-term responses were more important, here, short-term, you know, the example might use the term primary impacts. Remember, they, they're, they're interchangeable. And long-term or secondary impacts... Again, there's uh, no real wrong or right answer. It's quite a difficult question to answer and not to argue either way. Um, but the examiner isn't really worried about that. It wants you to consider the, the impact that both short-term and long-term impacts can have and then make a decision on which one you feel is more devastating. Do you agree with this statement that short-term impacts are more devastating or do you disagree with it? Yeah, we talked before about this idea of signposting words. Okay, and this is a really clear signposting word here. Okay devastating if we can use that word in our question or some kind of derivative of it like the, the devastation um, then it's going to show the examiner that we're actually relating to what the question is asking us and so we've got two sides of the argument so one side of the argument is going to be a kind of an agreement with the statement that short term impacts are more devastating and obviously then we're going to have a disagreement with that so our Sentence starters, you know, straight away I'm thinking here, you know, I'm definitely going to be wanting to use connectives like however and whereas to show both sides of the argument. And I'm also going to want to kind of start up my uh, answer with, you know, maybe a statement or a sentence such as to a certain extent. Okay, or on, on the one hand, short term impacts are more devastating, and on the other, they're not. It shows the examiner there that I'm considering that there are two sides to this argument. Okay, and that I'm going to consider both before, as I said earlier, giving a conclusion at the end, which is going to give my opinion on which one is more devastating. Okay, and as I said, there is no wrong or right answer on that. It's which one you find easier to argue. I would say, uh, with experience, that actually arguing that long-term impacts are more devastating is actually kind of easier and shows a more uh, complex and geographical argument than short-term impacts. Right, look at the first paragraph then. I've used that introductory term that we talked about, okay, to a certain extent. Immediately, that is highlighting to the examiner that I want to consider both sides of the argument. I am going to say that, yes, primary impacts are more devastating, but at the same time, that I'm going to go the other way as well. So to a certain extent, primary impacts on natural hazards can be more devastating. There's that signposting word. Then secondary ones, although this is not always the case. Clearly that although links under that idea of those connectives that I was just talking about in the planning. However, whereas it shows the examiner that I am aware that there are two sides of this argument and that I'm going to put those two sides of the argument forward in the rest of my answer. For example, the 2015 Nepalese earthquake. I've got my example in there really nice and quickly, okay, which is obviously really important. It asks me to use examples uh, in the in the question. Okay, I don't need to use more than one. Really, the answer, the question would have a bracket around the S, so use an example or examples. It's up to the student, up to you guys to choose. It resulted in the deaths of 8,800 people. I've got... One of my primary impacts in there, which would have had a devastating impact on local communities. There's that use of that signposting word, devastating. How families and children who were left orphaned, well, over 200,000 people were badly injured, putting great pressure on hospitals and emergency services. I've made it very obvious why this primary impact was devastating. 
very easy to forget that. You know, as soon as you say 8,100 people deaf, it should be obvious that uh, about why you're talking about devastation. However, we've got to remember that the examiner is not allowed to assume or imagine what you're thinking. So it's very important to spell it out. However, it could be argued that the secondary deaths caused by the spread of waterborne diseases caused by damage to underground sewage systems is similarly devastating, and yet worse, as such, as such impacts could be easily avoided through provision of clean drinking water. There's that connective, however, showing that second side of the argument. See the way it's blended. I've given the importance of a primary impact, now I'm talking about the importance of a secondary or long-term impact. And this is where I said to you, though it is up to you, I think it's easier to argue that secondary impacts are sort of are worse because they are generally quite avoidable. For example, we see in a lot of high income countries, waterborne disease diseases following a hazard are not an issue because that country is able to afford clean provision of bottled water. Um, in countries like Nepal, and that's why I chose Nepal, the secondary impacts can be really quite significant uh, and a large number of deaths caused by something that should be avoidable. And in one way, in my opinion, remember really this is what this question is asking you about that kind of makes it worse than the primary impacts that in one way are unavoidable. Moving on down then. So, the Nepal earthquake also resulted in the destruction of over 250,000 buildings. Again, I've given prime examples of a short-term impact, leaving a vast number of people homeless without their belongings and stranded in emergency accommodation. Again, clear explanation of why that would be devastating. While this can have a devastating impact on people's quality of life and health, being in an emergency shelter is likely to only be a short-term impact. Clear use of that term devastating, that signposting word that we talked about earlier. And I've given and started to show you my hand in terms of my answer here about actually why is what what am I going to go with? Because I said being in an emergency shelter is likely only to be short term. So I'm kind of showing to the examiner that I'm starting to form an argument that though I think that it's important, it's not as important or devastating as the more long lasting secondary impacts. On the other hand, so I've got that connective again to show my blending of the argument, the destruction of Nepal's tourist attractions, i.e. the Dahara Tower in Kathmandu, resulting in a significant loss of tourism, resulting in devastating economic impacts. Again, signposting word of devastating in there and I've even shown an ability to categorise through the use of economic there. This secondary impact can have long-term consequences resulting in survivors losing significant income and having to rely on only earning money from local residents. Simultaneously the country may also have to invest heavily in repairs and rebuilding creating national debt and a reliance on international aid. This can have long-term impacts on the country's ability to develop and make it potentially more vulnerable to future natural disasters. For example, being unable to fund earthquake-proof buildings enhancing the scale of future primary impacts. And this is why I think it's easier to argue that secondary impacts are more important. Okay, the fact that a country like Nepal would have had its development hindered so much by the loss of income and the repair costs of the initial earthquake means that it would be unable to afford to prevent uh, primary impacts from future earthquakes, whereas a high-income country that would have less severe secondary impacts would therefore be in a better position to prevent uh, another disaster in the future causing significant primary impacts. Furthermore, the destruction of infrastructure such as electricity lines meant that many parts of Nepal were without power for one year, again reducing Nepal's ability to develop and having significant impacts on the quality of life of the country's rural population. Many survivors also suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, again demonstrating how hazards can have long-term devastating impacts. That little bit there from on, I put that in there in our model answer. If you didn't include that in your one when you're in the time conditions, it's not necessarily going to lose you marks, but it's again using those terms of devastating and showing the significance of long-term impacts. Finally then, we need to move on to our conclusion. So, in conclusion, I feel that secondary impacts are more devastating than primary impacts. I've now clearly stated my argument. I've given a balanced view of both the importance of primary and secondary impacts, um, and I have shown my hand slightly earlier on, but now I'm making it very clear to the examiner, this is what I'm thinking. This is because I'm clearly justifying my conclusion, which is really, really important to the examiner. It needs to be justified. It needs to be substantiated. Just saying I feel that secondary impacts are more devastating than primary impacts isn't enough for a decent conclusion. This is because they can be avoided or have longer term consequences than primary impacts, including devastating impacts on a country's ability to develop economically a long term quality of life of its residents. Okay, nothing really new in there. I've talked about the fact that secondary impacts can stop a country developing and have impacts on the quality of life of its residents, for example, provision of clean drinking water, lack of electricity. But I'm just summarising my argument.